Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to this evening night service, a night of rejoicing and giving thanks to our God. I know the week has been crazy, but we just want to just spend some time to refuel and, and reflect on his goodness for tonight and just let him know that he is our friend. He has reassured us that he is our friend. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, he is with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. No matter how dark the place is, he's there. No matter how high the place is or low the place is, he's there. Hallelujah. So we just got a few songs just to give him glory for right now and just give him praise because he is our friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's go. Hallelujah. I'm so glad you're my friend. I'm so glad you're my friend. Yeah. Doesn't matter what's going on, you're my friend. I can boast and say that I'm your friend. Yeah. I'm a friend of God.
Father, Lord, thank you. Oh, Father, Lord, thank you. Yes, Lord. Daily, you call us friends. Thank you, Father. Daily, you call us beloved. Daily, you call us your own. I just want to thank you this morning. Friend, there will never be a friend. That is closer than a brother, friend, always worth the wait. You are faithful as the day. You say we are friends. Let's say that again. You are friend, you are friend.
for argument, there's no one that can challenge you and there's no one that can take your place. We thank you, O oh God, for everything you are doing. We thank you for uh, the blessedness of Christ in our lives. And we just appreciate you. Thank you for how our week has gone. Thank you for where we are. Thank you for where you are leading us to. Thank you because at the end of this week, we will all have cause to give praise and glory to your holy name. We thank you, O oh God, Bless your people this evening. Uh, help them, oh God, to be able to uh, have an insight into your word and your heart concerning the covenant. We give you praise and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. next few minutes, I will uh, try and just uh, go back and touch on a few things that we talked about on Sunday uh, morning. Uh, you know, if you have been following or if you followed us over the uh, Sunday service, you will uh, know or you will realize or you remember that we are dealing with what we call the power of covenants, all right? We're dealing with what is called the power of covenants. And uh, in trying to uh, get into what the power of covenants are, um, we, we went through a few things which I will just touch on, and we will just uh, go from there. I just want us to pay attention to uh, this, this topic and see how much God is going to help us in... Uh, uh, different areas of our lives, not just for comprehension alone, but how we uh, apply it uh, to our lives both now and as uh, the future uh, comes into our life, because we always need it. Uh, we need to understand uh, covenants, especially the covenants that we have with God. All right? So, the power of covenants. And... Um, Started with a, a simple definition, which is a covenant is an agreement between two or more people, all right? And I uh, went on a little further to say, uh, depending on who is involved, right, the meaning of the covenant is dependent or the meaning, the impact or the efficacy or the importance of the covenant depends on those that are involved, all right? Uh, covenants... Uh, take a new meaning if you have, um, you know, if you have a, a very, um, uh, say, important or great personality involved, 
All right? So, uh, covenants, again, are an agreement between two or more people. All right? And it takes a whole new meaning depending on who is involved in um, uh, uh, the covenant. All right? And we looked at two types of covenants. The first type, I mean, initially we looked at two types of covenants. And the two types of covenant are a co covenant between a man and a man. All right? In other words, a man comes and cuts a covenant with, you know, um, with, with another man uh, so that they can get into some kind of agreement. And those agreements come with, number one, it comes with responsibilities. All right? And then number two, it comes with privileges. So there are privileges and there are responsibilities on, you know, required of those covenants. So no man goes into a covenant with another man without uh, the, the, um, the, 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 the after effects of a privilege and a responsibility or an expectation. There's always an expectation for a covenant, all right? So a, a covenant between a man and a man is you give me something, I give you something. You give me something, I expect something, all right? So those are covenants. And the second kind of covenant that we saw on Sunday was the covenant between God and, be, between God and man. So there are covenants between God and between man, all right? And um, I will add a third one, right? There is a covenant between uh, nations, a covenant between communities, a covenant between a group of people, right? They come together and they want to, you know, uh, uh, support themselves or try and forge a kind of agreement that will be beneficial to both of them. But there's no covenant without a sacrifice. And that's what I want, to, I, I, I want you to understand. Whether it is between man and man, God and man, or individuals, all right? The first thing that takes place in a covenant is there's always a sacrifice. You sacrifice something. So a man says, give, you give me something, I get this back from you, or I give, you, I give this back from you, all right? You give me something, I get this from you, all right? You, I give you that, you take that back from me. So there's always a reciprocation of uh, uh, um, uh, 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 privileges, or sacrifices. So every covenant involves a sacrifice, and every covenant involves a privilege. All right? Uh, but uh, because of uh, time, I just want to rehash one of the most important things that we talked about, you know, the different kinds of covenants, and I just want to talk about the redemptive covenant, or the covenants of, re the covenant of redemption. I'm sorry, the covenants of grace. That's what I want to talk about. All right? The covenant of grace. And what is this covenant of grace? The covenant of grace falls in that category of the agreement or an agreement between man and God. All right? And in this kind of agreement, there is the benevolence of God, which is, which is uh, this kind of this particular agreement is different from the one between man and man. How? For a man... One man to the other in covenant agreement, there's an expectation of reciprocation. Something happens. You give me this, I take that. Or you give me this, I give you this, based on conditions. So there's sacrifice, there's conditions. All right? Now, but the covenant of grace, which is a covenant or an agreement between God and man, does not fall that way. In other words, man is inferior while God is superior. That's number one. The first thing I want you to know. All right? Then number two, man has nothing to offer God that will suffice to meet a covenant agreement. Instead, God is the only one because he's superior. All right? God is superior. He's all-knowing. He created all things. He's, he's, he's omniscient. There's nothing we can do from our own end to meet any requirement that will satisfy God. So, in this kind of covenant, instead, we are receivers. There are only, you know, God is given and we are receiving. But there's nothing to reciprocate to be able to create a covenant. So, God created this covenant. And the Bible talks about this covenant. How was it formed? That God made himself the sacrifice through Jesus. So, he gave the sacrifice. 
and the benefits of the sacrifice are going to be received is going to be received by us all right we're the beneficiaries because he is a benevolent god that is going to make all things available all all that we need to do in this covenant in this covenant of grace between god and man is that we make ourselves available we receive the grace of god we receive this uh, uh, agreement that God has made with us. Now, before I go deeper into this, I also want you to know that this covenant of grace is what is also called the new covenant. All right? So, because when we, when we look at scriptures, we look at, you know, the old, old, the old covenant and the new covenant. When you look at the old covenant and the new covenant, I mean, we're, we're looking at it from scripture. Oh, the old covenant is like maybe from Genesis to Revelation and all of that. All right? No, but, but, but there's more to that covenant, the covenant of grace, than just uh, the Genesis to Revelation. All right? So, before you understand the new covenant, you have to understand what the old covenant is. What is the old covenant? The old covenant is the covenant that God, or the covenant of agreement that God made with his people from old, and it started with Abraham. That's the Abrahamic covenant. And you can see the ratification all through scriptures in the Old Testament, all through the Old Testament scriptures uh, uh, in Egypt, and all of that, and how God led them to the promised land, and how God interacted with them based on that agreement that God had with them. But as God began to examine all that was going on with that old covenant, the Bible helps us to understand from Hebrews 8 that that covenant was inadequate. In other words, it could not meet the requirement of what kind of relationship or the abundance that God wanted us to have in terms of his grace. That old covenant was not enough. It was not adequate enough. And therefore, God has to recreate or God has to create a new covenant or he has to give us a new covenant. And that new covenant is a covenant of grace which was ratified in Jesus. Jesus became the sacrifice. Remember, like I said, in the covenant between a man and a man, you bring something, you might say, okay, we're sacrificing your blood, we plant a tree, you give me a tree, I give you money, you give me money, we just exchange something, all right? But in this one, Jesus was a sacrifice. And the sacrifice of Jesus was adequate for God, from God's end, and was also adequate from our end. In other words, Jesus became the batter of exchange between God and man. And who is Jesus? Jesus is God in the flesh. So God used himself for that agreement in Jesus. Look at what that's, look at, look at, I want us to begin to read now from Hebrews 8, from verse 6. Look at what it said. But Jesus, our high priest, because every covenant, both in the old covenant and in the new covenant, you know, you need a priest. You need a priest to preside over the activity of the covenant. All right? So, in the new covenant, this high priest is Jesus. But now, Jesus, our high priest, has been given a ministry that is far superior to the old priesthood. All right? So, in the old covenant, they had a priesthood. There was a priesthood that was there. But now, Jesus is a new high priest, and this priesthood that Jesus brings to this ministry of the new covenant or how to administer this covenant is a more superior high priest. Number one, that's what you have to know. So the priest that superintends over this covenant is a superior priest than the old covenant, than the priest of the old covenant. For he is, for he is the one who mediates for us, for us a far better covenant with God based on better promises. Can you see that? So he, he, he mediates. In other words, he negotiates. Jesus was the one that came in to negotiate this new covenant between us and God. All right? So it's not just only a better covenant because of the way the covenant is enacted. In other words, we are not required to bring anything in. We are not required to sacrifice anything. We are not sacrificed to produce anything. We are not required to exchange anything in this new sacrifice. All right? So, that's why the covenant, that's one of the main reasons why the covenant is different. 
And now, because this covenant is different, the Bible from Hebrews 6 is helping us to understand that this covenant is also based on better promises. Remember, like I told you, every covenant has privileges and responsibilities. So the privileges or the promises of this new covenant are even better. So the covenant is better, the privileges or the promises are better. Look at what it said in verse 7. If the first covenant had been faultless or if it had been adequate, that's another translation, says that. If this old covenant, the old covenant, if it had been adequate, there's a covenant that God cut between Abraham and the children of Israel and himself. If God, I mean, if God had seen that this covenant was adequate or if it was faultless, there would have been no need for a second covenant to replace it. So one thing that we saw, or that one thing that we see here, is that it is what? It is a better covenant. It has better promises. And number two, it, the previous one is inadequate. Number three, sorry. The previous one is inadequate. Therefore, by implication, it means that God rectified an adequate covenant. So there are three things we are looking at, three things we have seen so far now. It's a better covenant. It has better promises. It is adequate. All right? But when God found fault in the people, he said, the day is coming. The day is coming. So why was the other covenant not adequate? Why was it not adequate? Because it was not enough for the people to be able to fulfill the covenant, to fulfill their own part of the covenant, their own part of the agreement. It was difficult for them to be able to fulfill that part or that uh, 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 area of agreements. All right? But when God saw that, uh, found fault with the people, all right? So the covenant, the first covenant, what it was is that it was, why it was inadequate was not because of anything other than it was just challenging for us as human beings to fulfill them. Look at what he said. Look at what, how God said this now. Look at how this covenant, this new covenant, the covenant of grace works now. He said, the day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and of Judah. And when you see the people of Israel and of Judah, you can put your name there, all right? This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors. Talking about the first covenant with Abraham and all of that. When I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. So, he, so, so this covenant involved him taking them, you know, out of Egypt and leading them out. And if you read, if you go back to Genesis, you'll find that story of how God led the children of, of, of Israel out, you know, and they had to cut a covenant and all of that, you know, um, um, uh, and put the Lord on the lamppost, on the, on the lamppost, right? All right. Uh, how he led them out of Egypt. They did not remain faithful to my covenant. Why? Even though God was faithful, they could not be faithful because we are in, in us, we are inferior, we have an inadequacy or an, or an inability to be able to fulfill this agreement with God. So I turned my back on them, says the Lord. But this is the new covenant I will make. Sorry, but this is the new covenant I will make. With the people of Israel on that day, says the Lord. That's when the, new, that's when the time for the new covenant starts. This is the covenant I will make with them. I will put my laws in their minds. Remember in that old covenant, one of the things that, was, that came to seal the old covenant was the Ten Commandments, right? The laws that God gave Moses. Now, that law was written on tablets. And because it was written on tablets, then the people had to go in to go and study it and try and obey that covenant. But God saw that that was not going to work. So how was he going to change it? What changed now? Instead of writing the laws on the tablets, guess what? He said, I will put my laws in their minds. I will write them on their hearts. It's not going to be on tablets. And I will be their God. And they will be my people. And they will not need to teach their neighbors nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, you shall know the Lord. For everyone from the least to the greatest will know, 